Welcome again. In this session, we're going to be talking about Jesus, the exorcist. And he's going to be talking about demons, evil spirits, and all kinds of things. Casting out evil spirits, and he's going to go into details about how that works. I'm going to be reading from Luke chapter 11, verses 14 through to 26. And uh, so let's start here. We're going to start off at Luke chapter 11, verse 14. He was casting out a demon. Now, again, this this is not just a personality defect. This is an, an actual entity, an actual evil spirit. He was casting out a demon, and it was mute. When the demon had gone out, the mute man spoke, and the, and the multitudes marveled. Everybody was amazed. But some of them said he casts out demons by Beelzebul, the prince of the demons. Okay. The word, the word Beelzebul or Baal Zebul uh, means Baal, Lord, Zebul, of the flies. You know? Demons, or flies are kind of like, you know, representative of demons. So the, one, of the name of, one of the names of the devil is Beelzebul, the Lord of the flies. So uh, people were saying, because, you know, people, when, they, when, they got, when they're vindictive against you, when they hate you, when they are spitefully, you know, accusing you, they'll find any reason to accuse you. They did with Jesus, the most perfect man that ever lived, okay? They accused him of being, actually using the devil, but actually, you know, using the devil to cast out devils, okay? Um, he casts out demons by the Lord of the flies, by Beelzebul, the prince of the demons. Verse 16, others testing him sought from him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Very, very interesting. We see today in the, in the world, there are countries that are divided. Brought to desolation. Yes. A house divided itself falls. When you got a household, you got parents and children, the parents and children need to be all united. If you got one of the parents or one of the children that is against the house, it is no good. Absolutely no good whatsoever. A house divided against itself falls. That's what it means. It's not talking about a literal building. It's talking about a family. If Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that I cast out demons by Baal Zebul. But if I cast out demons by Baal Zebul, by whom do your children cast them out? So here we got not, wasn't just Jesus casting, casting out demons here. It was other people as well. The children of the accusers of the Lord were casting out demons. Isn't that interesting? Jesus wasn't the only exorcist that, were, that was alive back in those days. Therefore, they will be your judges. They, their own children will be their judges. But if I, by God's finger, cast out demons, then God's kingdom has come to you. God's rule and reign has come to you. God rules and reigns here. The evil spirits must leave. Verse 21, when, when the strong man, fully armed, guards his own dwelling, guards his own house or his own home, his goods are safe. His, good, his goods are safe, excuse me. But when someone stronger attacks him and overcomes him, he takes from him his whole armor in which he trusted and divides his plunder. In other words, everything that's in the house. He that is not with me is against me. He who doesn't gather with me scatters. The unclean spirit, when he has gone out of a man, passes through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. He says, I will turn back to the, to the house from which I came out. When he returns, he finds it swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes seven other spirits more evil than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. The last state of that man becomes worse than the first. Now, let's go back here again to verse 24. The unclean spirits. Now, I want to point out to you here, 
this is a demon, an unclean spirit, or an evil spirit. What? Why would an evil spirit even get in there in the first place? Because of uh, anything, anything against Torah invites evil spirits. What the Torah, what what God's law and instructions and guidelines says is unclean. Unclean actions bring unclean spirits. Spirits would usually, if not all the time, would come into a man because of his actions, because of his sins, his transgressions against God's law. The unclean spirit, when he's gone out of a man, passes through dry places. So here this spirit has a mind of its own. It's not just a it's not just an imagination. It's not just a thought. It's not just a force. It is an entity that can think for itself, move for itself, live for itself. When that spirit has gone out of the man, passes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. Okay, it wants it wants water. It wants it wants uh, it wants rest. It wants uh, comfort. You won't find that in dry places. He says, I will turn back to the house from which I came out. So, you know, sometimes the spirit, when it, when it, when a spirit goes out of you, it will come back to you. So that's why you gotta, you gotta watch, you know, for example, those who are kleptomaniacs and they steal all the time. And then if they, if they've repented and that spirit has gone out of them, just keep an eye on them. Cause it could come back. It could not that it ever will, but it could come back and they can return to their former former state. Same with a liar who has always been a liar in that they've repented and they stop from lying. You always got to be careful that that spirit, a lying spirit doesn't come back into them. Same with other kind of unclean spirits, other kind of evil spirits, occultic spirits, witchcraft, all this stuff. You got to watch out once you've repented and that spirit has been cast out or leaves you. You got to be careful that it does not come back to that house. Verse 25, when he returns find, and finds it swept and put in order, then he, goes, then he goes and takes seven other spirits more evil than himself and they enter and dwell there. The last state of that man becomes worse than the first. So again, you know, the last session we talked about the Holy Spirit coming in you, Okay. Now, if, if an evil spirit wants that home of your body or your soul to be swept and put in order before it comes back, if, it, if it's swept and put in order, in other words, if it's prepared for the evil spirit, it will come back with seven more. How much more, I can say, I should say, should you prepare for the Holy Spirit to enter you? Prepare through repentance and in in. in living a lifestyle of righteousness and holiness, caring what God thinks, not what you think, not about your lusts and your desires and your will and your plans and your life and what you want and how you should be served, but rather how you should serve God and other people. Prepare for the Holy Spirit. Because I know that some people out there, they teach, well, you, you don't know, you don't do anything. You just, you just ask this God and God will fill you with the Spirit. Because if you, it's not by works, you know, God, God came, you know, to, to die for you and, and, and all, all this kind of stuff. No, you need to prepare. Jesus died, yes. Why did he die? So that you could have the power to look upon him and say, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, not the old sinful self. I'm dead. I'm crucified with him. Sin is no longer, no longer exists in me. I live righteously and holy and holy according to God's law and his righteousness and his word and his ways. That's why he died, so that he could help us to repent. So when you repent and you fully clean house and make room for God to come in, the Spirit of God, then that will be a marvelous thing. But just be careful that you do not allow other you know, evil spirits in by your sin, Okay, if you if you know you've repented and and uh, you know you've repented as well as possible, you know you're living right according to God's law. You've got nothing to fear. God will protect you. 
God's there. You got nothing to fear. You know, like it says in Psalm 91, that God will protect you. It's this great, famous protection psalm. But it also says, he who dwells in the, in, in, in the shadow of the Almighty. You've got to dwell there. You've got to live with God. And I'm, t- I'm telling you, you can't live with God with sin in your life. You can't live with God with, with uh, you know, with any kind of sin in your life, with selfish ambition or, you know, uh, an evil tongue or evil with hands that shed innocent blood or anything like that. You've got to live righteous. So go and sin no more. As Jesus said time and time again, he said, go and sin no more. Hey, got a question for you. Would Jesus command you to go and sin no more if it was not possible to sin no more? Some of you, and I've heard so many people say, well, we're all human, we'll all sin, and we'll sin all of our life up until the day we die. Wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. Jesus said, go and sin no more. And we've got many evidence, many, many different uh, pieces of evidence in the scripture, many exhibits of people who have repented and, and, and is counted righteous before God by their obedience to his law. Paul is one in, in, in the book of Philippians. You know, the, the parents of John the Baptist is another. Job is another. You know, uh, Noah is another. So many more we can talk about. The righteous men of God, the, the men of old who were considered to be righteous before God. So that's a good thing to think about. Go and sin no more. And think about what we said here today, study his scriptures, always keep his scriptures, always keep the word of God before your eyes. May he enlighten the eyes of your understanding to his word. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen.